I found a formula that works for me, a three-part formula for sustainable motivation. Like when people hear Limitless, a lot of people think about the movie, right? Um, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro. Bradley goes from zero to hero by taking a pill. All of a sudden he has incredible focus. He wrote his book in a few days. He had this eidetic memory, right? And he had a surge of motivation. But after that pill wore off, you know, 24 hours later, he just went back to baseline, right? And I feel like there's a three-part formula for motivation. Sustainable motivation for me is three parts. It's P times E times S3. P times E times S3 will get you there. Meaning that if you are procrastinating, putting things off, think about anything, right? And also when we're talking about lies of learning, the seven lies, there's also lies around motivation. Like I think one of the lies, limited ideas that we entertain is that we have to enjoy the action. Like the only proof and evidence somebody's motivated is they're doing something to get progressed towards that goal, right? If they're not doing it, they're not motivated. So we could, that's, that's obvious, physical, you could observe that, right? So, you know, like objectively. Now, one of the lies that I, I, I feel like I, I learned also from, from you is that you have to enjoy that thing that you're motivated to do. Like I know because I, I follow you on Instagram very closely that you're, you know, you're working out and yet you get up early and then you do it. But I asked you one time, do you enjoy it? And, and the, the response you gave me was like, you hated it. Now, I don't know if you feel about that, <laughs> like that now currently, but oh, this yes. was a couple of years ago, but you still do it, you know? So nobody could question motivation because you're still doing that early in the morning when you dislike it. So it's a lie that you have to enjoy that thing. Like every morning, I take cold showers, I take ice baths every freaking morning, right? Without fail, I, I never ever miss it, right? I'll go cold and I'll go warm and cold and warm. I'll go, people watch me on Instagram, I'll do five minutes in an, a full ice bath and I hate it. I hate every moment of it. I grew up in the Northeast, I hate it, but I do, I do it because I have a reason. So the P in this formula is purpose. Like I believe that like, and it's not just intellectual reason for, for doing something, it's feeling it in, in, your, in, in your whole self, right? And I have a reason to do it because I'm on this mission, right? And this purpose, right? I want, I want, I want to, I want to in fact, positively impact 1 billion brains, right? No brain left behind. So I'm very, very clear. So my reason is there and I, it's not just intellectual and it's not, it's not just pleasurable. I, I feel like the pain of who I would let down if I don't do this. Like I feel it because I'm that person. Like I still feel like I'm speaking right now on this video to that 18 year old version of myself or that 13 year old version of myself. And after you do it for so long, you just don't know any other way, but that's the P in the formula. And then what I did was like scientific method. If I was going to build the ultimate human being who's motivated all the time without fail is reason enough. Like if per someone has a deep enough reason, are they always going to be motivated? Is there any exceptions? And I was like, yes, the E is missing. They could be missing energy, meaning that a lot of people could have be so tuned into their reason and know why it's important to to work out every day or to to read every day or you name it. Right. But they ate a lot of, you know, crappy food and they're in a food coma that might keep them from working out or they didn't sleep the night before. Not having the proper level of, of vitality, physical and mental vitality could keep you from from being motivated. And then I went in back into my, you know, thought experiment. Okay. The person has deep reasons. They feel it for, for, for wanting to do build this business or have that great relationship or that perfect, that great body. They have unlimited energy. Are they hundred percent every single time going to be motivated? And I was like, no, there's an exception here. There's something missing S3 because, and I'll tell you what S3 is in a moment, but they could have that thing too big in their head. Like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to build an entertainment company. And then, but they're not motivated because it's too big, right? And, and, or it's, it's confusing, right? And so a confused mind doesn't do anything. So S3 stands for a small, simple step, right? I want to have the perfect body. I want to build this, this million dollar company. Then that could be too intimidating or too confusing or unclear and people never take the action. So a small, simple step and breaking it down into how do you, what's the, what's the smallest task you could do right now where you can't fail. That's going to make, give you progress. And it's all about energy management because think about motivation. It's energy management. It's having a purpose and a reason gives you clarity, gives you energy. 
you know, the things I talk about in the whole chapter of the book on how to optimize sleep and an optimal brain diet and lowering stress because chronic stress saps your energy, right? It shrinks your brain. Right now with all the fear going on, this, this, this pandemic, it's not just a physical pandemic. I and mean, people have their physical hygiene, wash your hands and social distancing. People have no, no strategies for mental hygiene. Right. And this chronic fear is like it, it, it wreaks, wreaks havoc on our immune system. Right. This whole area of psycho neuroimmunology, how our thoughts could affect our body, you know, stress levels and cortisol and adrenaline. Not only does it shrink the brain, but you're right. It shuts off big portions of your critical thinking. And, and you talked about it yesterday. Also on the live, there are parts of your brain that determine how to feel ab about something. Right. So you lose your autonomy because then you just react to things. And again, you, you gave away your power. But for me, and I know this is field tested, not only uh, with working with clients, but also myself. You know, when I have no sleep, it doesn't matter what you eat. Right. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you're working out or not. Like that's like the master energy control center. So for me, I would always lean in to my practices because it forced me to double down. Now, I think there's a gift. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's been my experience where when people go through struggles that there's a gift in this. Like whether there's a gift of what's going on right now, true or false, I choose to believe it because then I'll operate from that from that point of view and that perspective, meaning what's the gift in me having learning challenges and fearful of public speaking? Well, I got really damn good at learning and public speaking because that's all I do now for, for, for a living, right? What was the advantage that came out of this sleep deprivation experiment for 10 years? Now, now, now it's much better is I could tell you two things immediately. It forced me to double down on everything I teach because I'm just I'm just documenting and telling people what I do. Right. Otherwise, I won't be able to perform at the level that I do. And then number two, it's forced me also to be very selective in the things I say yes to. Like right now, there's no one nowhere I'd rather be no one I'd rather be talking to right now because as we heard like like I'm so clear because when you have a finite amount of energy and wherewithal you know and, and vitality or, or bandwidth you don't say yes to a lot of things right and so for me I just focus on the things that that I feel like this I'm, I'm completely here and wherever I am I'm completely there when I talk about mindset for me functionally it's this set of assumptions and attitudes we have about something Right, it, uh, what would fall underneath mindset would be uh, what we believe is possible. What would fall under mindset is what we believe we are capable of. What would fall under mindset is what we believe we deserve even. Somebody could be very motivated, they can even have the right methods, but they're gonna bump up to a psychological ceiling of, of what they think they're worth financially, or, that, or maybe they'll sell even self-sabotage potentially.